Guys, one of my pets is here that doesn't usually make it onto the channel very often. This is Maury. This is actually my husband's first cat from before we met. And he's named after Moriarty. Moriarty from um, Sherlock Holmes. And the name is so perfectly suitable because when we first met, Maury was about two years old and he's like the naughtiest little cat. Like he bites people. He still bites us. And I think he misses Rail because he's usually not on me and now I'm gonna be covered in cat hair so anyway oh my goodness hi Maury this never happens this never happens <laughs> okay so I wanted to film some tag videos and I saw one that just popped up on my subscription feed and it's one that is created by Mel Thompson here on YouTube. She's amazing. If you haven't seen Mel's channel, of course I'm going to link her original video down in the description box. She is so beautiful. <laughs> like, I don't even know how to explain it. She's not like the quintessential, like, I don't know what people like stereotypically think of, but her look is so edgy and I just find her 100% attractive. Like her short hair. She's just cool really cool and she's like a mom like oh my gosh anyway <laughs> I just I don't know how everyone does it I don't know how people keep up with their kids and do YouTube anyway she created a tag video called the truthful YouTube tag and I just thought it sounded really fun and I haven't filmed a tag video in forever so let's get into the questions question number one have you ever received a product tried it didn't like it and decided not to review it so I can think of two right off the top of my head. The first one is the Jaclyn Hill X Morphe collab, the more recent Wolf collection that she did. I was all over the place about buying this and then I finally did and I received it. I bought it on Morphe's website and honestly guys, I haven't even used, oh my god, oh my god, oh, yep, he's on a mission to ruin this sweater. I just got this sweater and it's so soft. Maury. Anyway, so I bought it on the Morphe website and I don't know, I, I feel like I don't love the quality. I actually think the quality on the original palette is so good and so I could definitely tell a difference in the quality in the vault. So I haven't reviewed it. It's sitting there. I've used it a few times and I have no desire to pick it up. The other product also that came to mind is another vault and it is the Ace Beauté Paradise Collection I believe is what it was called. I was so excited when I found out it was coming out and I bought it right away, spent way too much money. Those things have gone on sale like a hundred times since they came out now and I just don't have the heart to pick them up and you know use them enough times where I feel like I can review them. I just don't like the quality. They're very patchy, they're very powdery, they're hard to blend. So yeah, that those two palettes. Ow, oh my god, this cat. You guys, he's like sitting on my lap and digging. Art, none of our cats are declawed, so oh my god. Anyway, I think I just got cat hair off my nose. So yeah, I just hate those two palettes or those two collections. Let's move on to question number two. Product you use alone but don't show or use online. Um, <laughs> um, 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 is there anything I use alone? I can't think of anything off the top of my head. What do I use alone? There's nothing really in my collection that I'm like ashamed of or like any brands because I feel like, you know, if there's a brand you support, just like whether people like the brand or not, if you like it, like who gives, you know? So I can't think of anything off the top of my head, uh, but if I remember, I'll put it in the description box. Number three, product you want but you won't buy because you don't support the brand. Uh, there's really nothing, again, I think that ties back to the second one. There's nothing I wouldn't buy, even if it was a brand I didn't like. For instance, Morphe, I just bought that Jaclyn Hill vault. I bought a bunch of their liquid lipsticks, so I don't really like the brand, but I, I'm i done. Like I said in a video a while ago, <laughs> this cat, I'm done with like 
cancel culture and I'm so done with telling like people telling me how to think about things. I think that's like the scary part about drama channels and like opinions and I think like here on YouTube we're also good at giving our opinion and I think that's great because of course it's like freedom of speech you should be able to tell people how you feel but I think we're also like developing a culture where because so I'm not a big influencer but like say I had a million like subscribers so if I told my millions of subscribers like hey um oh my god Maureen get down can you just like lay down okay like if I if I told my subscribers like Jeffree Star sucks like Jeffree Star is cancelled of course like I'm gonna exude some amount of control on those million people it's same with smaller influencers even though we don't have hundreds of thousands of people we influence small amounts of people and I think sometimes especially with the generation now where it feels like people don't think for themselves it feels like everyone you know wants to fit in and so one person cancels somebody and then everyone like bandwagons that situation and I feel I feel like there's no right answer but yeah there's really no brands that like I don't support and won't buy from I don't think there's just like brands that I've never been like interested in that people don't support like Lime Crime I've just never I picked up one of their palettes once because they were so hyped um but I never liked the Venus palette so I never wanted to buy anything from them again so hopefully that was a very long answer but hopefully that kind of <laughs> gave you guys an idea of how I think um number four do you have any block words I thought I did but I actually don't um I just checked in my um back end of YouTube and I don't have any um, and I think that just goes to show like my channel is so small I don't really get a lot of trolls Number five, do you delete comments? If so, why? I don't generally delete comments. If I do, mostly it's because, oh my God, Maury. Seriously? No, he's grabbing the back of my sweater. Maury. Oh, oh. this sweater is going to be destroyed. Do you guys see him? He's such a troublemaker. This is why he's named Moriarty because he's a freaking villain. He's probably going to jump on. Maury. Oh my god. Anyway, what was I saying? Oh, do I delete comments? So I, I usually delete comments if somebody is attacking a subscriber or I don't know. Yeah, that's mostly it. I'll delete a comment if they're just like attacking somebody else that's trying to defend me. I find that pretty offensive. It's like, I'll leave people alone. I really don't like drama on my channel, so... If somebody's getting out of hand, yes, I will delete comments, but not if it's like, oh, your lipstick is whack. <laughs> hey! Oh my god! Ugh. He's chewing on one of my brushes. Okay. Number six, do you block people? I do block people, very happy to say. I just can't deal. Like I said, I don't deal with the drama. So currently on my channel, I have one, two, three... Four. 15 people blocked on my channel and those were just people that were leaving like spam and shit like ain't nobody got time I'm sorry but it's true <laughs> and the next question number seven have you ever lied about a product to stay on good terms with the brand best thing about being a small youtuber is that I don't have to do that and so no so yeah it's it's pretty sweet being a small YouTuber, I'm not going to lie. It's like, you buy your own product, I'm basically my own boss on my channel, and I don't have to deal with it, so that's great. Number eight, have you ever initially liked a product when you reviewed it and changed your mind but didn't let your audience know? So for me, if that's ever happened and I haven't let you guys know, it was purely accidental. I buy so much makeup, you guys. If this was my full-time job, I feel like I would be more organized. <laughs> Like, I feel like I would keep track of things better, I would do favorites videos, I would have my shit together, I'd do, like, eight looks, one palette, using one hand and a toe, like, I would be more, <laughs> I would put more time into it, but my time, I don't, like, have kids or anything, but, like, my time right now is so limited, so it's usually I'm filming on the weekends, and I don't, like, sometimes I try to plan ahead so I know what I'm going to film, 
but it is tough and so if I ever did that it, it was purely accidental never on purpose number nine influencers you don't trust Ooh, um don't trust I mean I think it's pretty easy to call out the big big influencers on this one I feel like you know a lot of them are pimping out the product the brand like for example a lot of influencers that are my skin tone or deeper that use benefit I'm always just like a little bit sus um, <laughs> because I don't know how like people darker than me make like hula work I know people like my skin tone wear hula and I'm like but how so yeah I'm a little suspicious of influencers that promote like complexion products for brands that don't really have a wide shade range or a lot of like the people that support Morphe <laughs> I feel like I don't trust so that that should give you guys a good idea okay influencers you trust the most I think for me influencers I trust the most are the smaller youtubers I love makeup struggles the thing too is I I mean I think people can have different opinions on makeup because there's things that like I can't I don't know how to like I can't make it work and like for example Angelica will make it work and it's I think it has to do with like skill level you know how much I mean she, I'm, she's like amazing at makeup and I'm just like a little turtle you know that just like plays with makeup so I think it's not really a trust it's just more about being open to different opinions so I I love hearing from youtubers that have different um, aesthetics than me and so some I trust I just love makeup struggles because I, I love her attitude <laughs> or lack of um, I don't know she doesn't like BS so I love that I love Angelica because she is so professional and her channel is run like a well-oiled machine I love Tina for her attitude the fancy face because she says some tough stuff that I think sometimes people shy away from so I love that I love Casey Holmes because she's just positive and fun to watch but she doesn't like associate with the mainstream youtubers as much so I enjoy that about her I sometimes really enjoy Jeffree Star and trust his opinions because he has his own brand and he seems to have a lot of experience with makeup so I don't think he has anything to lose when he calls out brands so I love that and there's a lot of great YouTubers out there I think in their own way. Number 11 secret tips or product application you don't show while on camera. Girl <laughs> do I look like I have secret tips? <laughs> oh my gosh I yeah no sorry guys I don't have any secret tips number 12 have you ever showed one product but we're actually using another no <laughs> have you ever not disclosed a sponsorship no because I've never done a sponsored video <laughs> number 14 have you ever had a bad interaction with a brand I don't think any makeup brands um, I think I was like, I've been annoyed with brands just because of like return policies. Like I was a little, a little annoyed with Melt when my 27 palette arrived broken and then they sent me a replacement and that one broke and then I was like, can you please just refund me? <laughs> please, I'm done. And they wouldn't pay like for me to return my, like I had to pay to ship the palette back. So that was kind of annoying, but it is what it is. And number 15, have you ever bandwagoned with other people's thoughts on a particular product? Uh, I mean, like if I, the only way I would bandwagon is if I felt the same way. Like I wouldn't just go with what everyone was saying just to go with what everyone was saying. Like I genuinely dislike the subculture palette. I didn't make a fuss about it just because everyone else was. I just knew I wasn't going to get any use out of it and I could tell the difference in the palette. I love the shades. I wish they would relaunch it with the ABH formula. <laughs> I really wish they did because I think the shades are so unique and I would love to have that palette in my collection again, but I just couldn't make it work. So I would say I'm definitely not a bandwagoner just for the sake of bandwagoning. If I agree with a group of people on a certain topic, I will bandwagon, of course. Number 16, things other creators do that get on your nerves. <laughs> Number 16 is tough for me. I'm trying to think of like a reasonable thing. A lot of the time 
I think the, there's definitely like clicks in YouTube. I think there's like an aspect where I feel like some people are like trying to jam pe their opinions down people's throats and like so many channels that are successful at attracting attention purely by giving their opinions. Um, but you know, that's for the consumer to decide too. Like if you're gonna just sit there and agree with somebody based on their opinion and you haven't done any research of your own. Um, the other thing that really bugs me is like creators that support some brands but won't support other brands. Like people will say like, oh, Jeffree Star is racist, this, that, and the other, but then they'll still talk about like Laura Lee and Manny and like Gerard Cosmetics and how like, do you guys remember when that happened? And then like Natasha Denona, it's just like, there's so much like hypocrisy um, within beauty gurus and the community. And again, I'm just like done with everything as far as like who I support, who I don't support. I'm just gonna buy whatever I wanna buy. That's like my thing for 2019. If Morphe makes something I like, I'm gonna buy it. If Lime Crime makes something I like, I'm gonna buy it. If any brand that is, you know, I'm interested, make something I'm interested in, I'm gonna buy it. If Jeffree Star makes something I don't like, I'm not gonna buy it. That's how I'm gonna treat every brand. It's just like, I just can't get on bandwagons anymore for like, let's fight for this cause and that cause and the other. It's like, vote with your dollar. That's all you can do. You're not going to change anyone's minds by being on YouTube and complaining or whatever. And uh, I think sometimes all those like opinion channels and videos and drama channels, all they're doing is just giving those people more attention than they deserve. And I think the easiest way to get people to stop caring about certain brands is to stop talking about them. So. That's that, and that is the last question. Yep, that's the last question. So I am so pumped. This is kind of a different tag, and I'm so glad that Mel came up with it. Again, it's called the Truthful YouTuber tag. I will link her video and the questions down below. I tag all of you, my small creator friends. I can't wait to see you guys' videos, and I will catch you soon. Bye, guys.